Welcome one, welcome all to the first installment of This Week in Gaming, your weekly news show of all things gaming. I am your host, Brother Keenan, and today we have a lot to talk about. So without further ado, let's get right into it. A new Xbox game showcase has been announced for June. This is coming from Matt Perslow from IGN. Microsoft has announced that a new Xbox game showcase will be live streamed this June and will once again include reveals of upcoming Xbox games from both first and third party studios. In addition, there will also be a Starfield Direct, a whole show dedicated to a deep dive on Bethesda's upcoming spacefaring RPG. As detailed in the Xbox Wire blog, the Xbox Game Showcase will be live streamed on Sunday, June 11th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. No specific developers or games have been teased, but naturally whatever is shown will be our first look at what's coming to Xbox, PC, and Game Pass in the future. Starfield Direct, which will be aired immediately following the Xbox Game Showcase, will feature tons of new gameplay, developer interviews, and behind the scenes insider information. Now, in my opinion, this is going to be a very important showcase for xbox coming off the heels of redfall's poor release they are in desperate need of wins in their triple a first party catalog sure they've been hitting with the smaller titles like pen smith and high fi rush most of the bigger first party titles have released and failed to set the world on fire not to say that these games aren't enjoyable but and to not bring up the old console war conversation when you look at playstation or even nintendo their games are selling the consoles. They're moving units. Microsoft has to bring the heat. Not to mention at their showcase, at their last showcase, they did not deliver, Phil Spencer's words, on the 12 month promise. So they really need to bring the heat and give Xbox fans a reason to be excited for this brand again. And honestly, give a reason to want to turn on the Xbox. And speaking of Phil Spencer, he had an amazing conversation with the kind of funny x guys. He talks about Redfall, the state of Xbox's Activision Blizzard deal. If you're interested, go make sure to check it out. I will have a link in the description below. Now, let's move on to some fun news. A teaser for Mortal Kombat 12 has released and it is hinting at another timeline reset. This is coming from Michael McWherter from Polygon. What appears to be a teaser for the next Mortal Kombat game makes the most of a tiny grain of sand tucked at the end of a 30th anniversary thank you video message from NetherRealm Studios. Developers is a hint of what's coming in Mortal Kombat 12, a game that's been announced but not officially revealed in a substantive way. It's short but hints at what NetherRealm plans to do with MK's decade old lore and complicated history. At the end of the video, released on Monday, Mortal Kombat series co-creator ed boone says thank you mortal kombat fans for 30 years of amazing support we're not quite done yet the video then cuts to the inside of an hourglass zooming in on a single grain of sand which dramatically explodes mortal kombat 11 fans will recognize that hourglass as the powerful device controlled by Kronika, the titan known as the keeper of time who was at the heart of that game's time-bending tale Kronika has the power to alter time, change the course of history, and bring people from the past into Mortal Kombat lore's current era. And that's how young Johnny Cage and older Johnny Cage meet in MK11. Kronika's hourglass represents the countless timelines she has crafted and altered in her pursuit to balance Mortal Kombat's various realms. Now, they have a bunch of spoilers in the article for MK story, so I'll move on to my own opinions. I'm super excited for a new Mortal Kombat. I played very little of MK11, mainly going through the story. I did play some online and enjoyed myself, and honestly, it did bring some toxicity out of me a bit. <laughs> Mortal Kombat will do that to you. But honestly, the story is super interesting to me always has been well let me not say always but after playing it i definitely wanted to know more lore why is Liu kang a zombie stuff like that i don't know how i feel about another timeline reset since i know they recently did it did one with uh mk9 but i also wouldn't be mad at it either this new game being a jumping on point for new fans could be great for the game and the franchise going into the future i'm just hoping we don't have to wait too long for an mk12 official reveal with summer game fest it makes too much sense for it to be there but tell me in the comments what rapper do you think is going to be doing the music for the reveal trailer while we watch scorpion and sub-zero beat the ever loving shit out of each other curious but moving on Fall Guys Season 4 is launching next week with a level editor. This is coming from Tom Ivan at VGC. Set for release on May 10th at 10 a.m. UTC. Its headline edition is creative, an in-game level editor. 
It lets players build custom rounds and then share them with the community. It's been the single biggest change that we've made in the game, and it's really exciting to finally give players the keys to the kingdom, basically, said Mediatonic creative director Joe Walsh. From now on, the dev team at Mediatonic are going to be using the creative tools to build levels for the game exclusively. He added, that means we can launch more content than we ever have before. With the launch of season four, we're going to be dropping over 50 rounds throughout the course of the season which is way more than we've ever managed before. Another thing that is also really helpful is that for the first time, we can start tweaking the levels over the air. So we won't need to push new updates live to fix bugs, which is a big problem we've always had with the game. So all of these things are just going to make the content so much richer and so much more varied from this point forward. This makes me really excited for Fall Guys. I love Fall Guys, me and my friend Kason. When it went free to play, we tried it out and I absolutely fell in love with the game. And the fact that they're giving us tools to create inside of the game, not only that, like these aren't like Mario Maker levels of like, okay, we're gonna make game design easy. You know what I mean? Make it like gamify, you know, game design. No, they are actually going to be using the tools that they're going to give us to design more rounds and levels within the game. That is amazing. That sounds amazing to me. I can't wait to see how bad shit the community are going to get is going to get with these tools in their hand and i'm looking forward to living out my game design dreams as well maybe some level creation streams in the future twitch.tv slash brother underscore game who knows who knows i'm very excited for that though uh but that does it for the top stories throughout the week uh now it's time for some quick hits i'm gonna go through some news stories that that i feel maybe aren't as big as the top stories but i feel like should get some shine and i'll have the links to the uh articles that i got them from down below for you to check out but first up in the world of marvel games there's good news and bad news good news is marvel spider-man 2 is getting a prequel comic on may 6th free comic book day and later this month amazing spider-man remaster will be available standalone on ps5 honestly as of recording it might be available now i think i saw that somewhere i could be wrong though bad news though or, you know, more like mid news, at least for me. The Switch version of Marvel's Midnight Suns has gotten canceled. This was announced alongside the release date for the last gen versions of the game, along with its final post launch DLC, which releases May 11th. I say this is kind of mid news because I was never going to play this game on Switch. I'm sure there was a community that probably were looking forward to this. And honestly, that really sucks for them that they won't get the chance to play this game that they've been looking forward to probably. The real question is, or where this really makes me wonder is if this is going to be kind of the first shot that tells Nintendo that it's time for an upgrade to the Switch. I know there have been rumors circulating constantly of a Switch Pro or a Super Nintendo Switch, whatever you want to call it, possibly being in the works but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Nintendo came out not too long ago saying there are no plans currently for a new switch and with the new Pokemon running like trash on the console you don't really know how <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom is gonna run so that's kind of scary uh third party games not looking third party ports not looking great on the switch and for Axis just outright canceling a switch port i wonder if this is gonna be i wonder if this is gonna make nintendo decide yeah it's it's time it's it's time to upgrade the switch or at least put some kind of plan in place to upgrade the switch in the foreseeable future uh in the realm of fighting games though capcom's president has said that street fighter 6 sales are targeting 10 million copies sold will it hit that there's no doubt in my fucking mind <laughs> that it will. with everything that's that they're putting all the work they're putting in for the casual audience to be able to just jump in and enjoy the game is going to sell extremely well. And Street Fighter V lifetime sales are at 7 million copies, according to the president. And that game at launch was ass. That was a two pack. In the words of Joe Budden, that was a two pack of ass, uh, according to the people who played the game. I did not play the game at launch. I did not care about fighting games at the time, but uh, don't get me wrong though. Now it's a good game, according to the people. I'm still not a big fan of Street Fighter V. Personally, it's a very basic fighting game and it's basic levels makes it hard, makes it a very hard game to play for me first game was dragon ball fighters so you know what they say about us fighters players not a whole lot of great stuff but uh <laughs> but street fighter 6 
currently previewing very well. The game from beta has is just it's fun as all hell. Like you just have to play the game. You know, like according to PlayStation, I've clocked in about 15 hours on the demo. So take that how you will. <laughs> and if online fighting games isn't your thing, there's so much single player content for you to enjoy. They built an entire Street Fighter RPG and put it in the game alongside a traditional arcade mode. This feels like the first fighting game that feels worth the premium price. With all that being said, there's no doubt in my mind that Street Fighter 6 is going to sell well. It's going to sell the 10 million copies that the president thinks that it will. Now going back, thinking about the first fighting game that is worth the premium price, Mortal Kombat, obviously. but. I think the first Japanese made fighting game that's going to feel worth the premium price. Just wanted to add that little note in there. But speaking of fighting game devs, Arc System Works, there's going to be another Double Dragon game releasing. Double Dragon Gaiden, Rise of the Dragons, developed by Secret Base and, Pub and published by Modus Games. There's no date for the game yet. Reveal trailer just dropped. According to the Polygon article I got this from, published by Michael McWherter, it's targeting this summer. It looks amazing already. The game will be releasing on everything, current gen and last gen, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Along with Chrono Odyssey, a new MMO. Not a big MMO guy personally. I've given a few of them a try, but none could really keep my interest for too long. The combat of this one, however, it looks like like a Souls-like game. So give me that and I could just play with friends. I know people are going to be like, just play Elden Ring, lol, but you know, maybe I don't want to, lol. But uh, this game looks absolutely beautiful. The game looks absolutely gorgeous. I was just scrolling through Twitter one day and found found a link to a PlayStation blog and saw this trailer and I, it was stunning. This, this game just looked absolutely stunning. So I just want more people to know about it because I didn't know about it until that day. Uh, there will be a Diablo 4 live stream on May 10th at 11 a.m. Pacific time, talking about its seasons, cosmetics, and how the game's battle pass will work. I'm very excited for this game, but I will not be watching this. I will not be watching this live stream. I don't really care too much about it. Uh, honestly, you just give me the game. Just give me the game. I don't care about all the extra shit. I, I don't really care about all the extra stuff. I'm gonna be honest with you. Just give me the game. <laughs> but if you're interested in it, it's there for you. Uh, PlayStation Studio, Pixel Opus is shut down. If you don't know who Pixel Opus is, they're the, they're the devs behind Concrete Genie, uh, underrated game on PlayStation. I actually really enjoy Concrete Genie. Hearts go out to them. Hearts go out to everyone affected. Hopefully find more work and make some more awesome games. Uh, last but not least, there've been Tears of the Kingdom leaks before the game has officially released. I personally, I personally have not seen any. Probably wouldn't care if I did either. Not that big of a Zelda guy. I still haven't finished Breath of the Wild. Uh, but for those looking forward to this game, be careful online when you're doing your daily Doom scroll. And for those like me who don't really care too much about the game, if you come across any leaks, just be cool. Don't ruin the experience for other people that are looking forward to going into this game blind. Just be cool, man. Uh, but that does it for the first episode of This Week in Gaming. Thank you for tuning in. Please leave a like and honestly comment down below what you thought about the news stories you heard about or even how I can improve upon the show. We'll love to make this as good as possible for you guys, but that'll do it for me. I'm Brother Keen. You can follow me on Twitter at Brother Keen underscore Instagram and TikTok if it's still around uh, at Brother Keen and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified for next week's episode. Thank you for joining me. Peace.